This is a continuation of the last video, so here's a quick rundown of what we're doing here. You catch all that? Alright, good, let's get started. Ellawood, Foray and Will. Ellawood gains 1 strength, skill, and speed when initiating combat. This bonus scales with the story. For both of our main lords, I wanted to make a skill that scaled with the progression and their character arcs in the game's story. Right, wife. Life good. Wife fight back, kill wife. To start off with, Ellawood would gain a minor bonus to his offenses when he initiates combat, to sort of show the strength of his resolve to find his father. However, after his father commits Toaster Bath after Chapter 20, the bonus goes up to two points in those stats, wherein his resolve is surprisingly strengthened by the tragedy, rather than decreased. And then, once he's finally accepted by the Heaven Seal after Chapter 27, the stats go up to plus three per combat he initiates. He's promoted, he's about to get the Durandal, and Nurgle's defeat seems close at hand. However, after he strikes Nian down, his bonus goes away completely. For chapters 29 and 30, Ellawood has no personal skill, as his resolve has started to dwindle. But once he claims the Durandal again at the start of the final chapter, the bonus shoots all the way up to plus 5 in those stats, signifying his willpower has reached an unbreakable peak. Now, that may be a little busted, but Ellawood's the main damn character. Let him have cool shit. We don't need to make our lords all shitty combat units. Hector, Ostean Will. Hector gains plus one defense and resistance when he is attacked. This bonus scales with the story. For Hector, his base skill starts as a defense buff, as it's the resolve to help his best friend in his time of crisis. And once the plot progresses to chapter 19, he's talked with Lynn on the boat and he's seen Layla's corpse on the Dread Isle, his resolve strengthens the skill to plus two in defensive resistance, as he realizes it's not just Ellawood he needs to protect. And then, once he learns the unfortunate fate of Uther's death at the end of chapter 31, the bonus goes up to plus three, as now he understands he shoulders the weight of an entire nation and its people. And when he finally receives Armand's at the start of the final chapter, his bonus jumps to plus four, as he carries the fate of the entire world on his shoulders now. His bonus won't go up to plus 5, because unlike Ellawood, he never really loses it, so he doesn't get to have the peak of the power for the sake of balance. And finally, if you're playing the mode where Ellawood or Hector aren't the main character, their skill just stays at the plus 2 variant for the entire game. Not too strong, not too weak. Anyway, let's get into all of these significantly less complex and less involved skills for the rest of the cast. Marcus, Stern Mentor. Units within three spaces of Marcus gain 1.1 times the experience points. Making a skill for Marcus was tricky. He's already one of, if not the, strongest units in Fire Emblem history. So I couldn't buff his combat in any way, as that would just be complete overkill for him. So instead, I opted to give him some kind of passive buff to his allies, rather than something to benefit himself. The idea is that, as the people are fighting, Marcus is helping instruct them on how to kill stuff, incorporating his mentor abilities that are explored in a totally cool character analysis video you should go watch right now. Lowen, Emergency Rations. Every other turn, Lowen heals for 10% of his maximum HP. Lowen's personal skill is a classic rendition of the same thing as a pre-existing skill, but slightly less. Renewal is a really powerful skill, so I had to tone it back a bit if I intended to give it to a unit for the start of the game for absolutely free. So, while the fighting's going on, Lowen takes a nibble of the snacks he always carries with him to heal some of his health. Lowen's dominant stats are health and defense anyway, so giving him a self-healing skill helps mesh well with his natural tank stat line. Rebecca, Youthful Vigor. Rebecca gains three speed on a combat she initiates. Rebecca's like Will in that, for her skill, I didn't want to tap into her backstory as much as I wanted to tap into her personality. Rebecca is a very energetic young woman. She's got spunk and energy to spare, and to me, that translates into speed. 
Rebecca struggles to double enemies early, so letting her do that will help her chip damage progress into actual damage a lot faster. She still won't be that good, but for the people that like to see their weak archers become absolute powerhouses, she can get there with a little bit less baby. Bartray, brave and bold. On combat, Bartray initiates, he gains 30 hit and loses 30 avoid. Look, I'ma be honest with ya, I completely ripped off the idea of this skill from the ability No Guard in Pokemon, but the idea that Bartray is so focused on offense that he doesn't pay attention to defense is really in character for him. Plus, Bartray struggles with accuracy pretty much the entire game, so this skill should help patch up that weakness a little bit. And the fact that it only activates on player phase means he won't just become a sitting duck on enemy phase, even though he kind of already was. Oswin, Superior Metal. If Oswin takes no damage from an enemy attack, he performs an immediate follow-up attack. Does not occur twice if the enemy doubles him. Oswin is a proud Armor Knight of Ostia. No one has more faith in a man with four movement than he does. So I decided to incorporate his great defense into his offense, by giving him more attacks if he can defend perfectly. Giving Oswin a potential three attacks per combat will help him become an offensive powerhouse that looks at speed as a mere concept rather than an actual stat that matters. It won't make your Cav fans look his way, but if armor and Jorys like myself can use it, it'll be super satisfying. Gi, Path of the Blade. Every time Gi increases his sword weapon level, he gains 100 experience points. From the get-go, I knew I wanted to incorporate Gi's weapon level into his skill somehow. It was just too fitting for him. He's a disciple of the Blade, who wants to become stronger than anyone in the art of swordplay. So giving him more power directly linked to when he gets better at using the sword seemed like a no-brainer way to go. It's also not too broken, as he starts at a respectable C rank in Swords, so it'd only get three free levels. But hey man, three free levels? That's three free levels. Merlinus, Agile Coward. Merlinus is guaranteed to dodge the first attack that targets him once per map. Alright, so I need to be honest, this was one of the hardest ones to come up with. Like, how the fuck do you give Merlinus a skill? He's a unit that has one, albeit useful, purpose, so it's not like I could give him a gun or something. The only thing I could really do is help improve his survivability, since not dying is kind of the only thing Merlinus needs. Thankfully, Merlinus himself is kind of a little bitch, so that was easy enough to incorporate into a skill related to dodging. Priscilla, Charming Smile. Male allies Priscilla heals gain 10 more HP. With Priscilla, I wasn't quite sure how to go about it. A lot of her story is based around tragedy and depression, and while I COULD weaponize depression, I decided instead to go for weaponizing how like four dudes fall for her at the drop of a hat. Due to how many men there are in the game, I couldn't give her a skill like Sane since that would be ridiculous, so I opted for a heal buff. Being able to heal for a minimum of 20 HP with Physic is definitely going to be helpful later on in the game, so I think it works. Raven, Ostean Grudge. Raven always has an effective damage bonus against armored units. Did you know that Raven really wants to kill Uther? Like, goddamn does he hate that man. So hey, I figured I might as well give him a skill that helps him fight against Ostea and what they're most well known for. The idea that Raven has been perfecting a sword skill to kill armors is something that sounds in character for him and his grudge. It is situational, but Raven was already like the only character in the game worth using a hero crest on, so he didn't really need all that much help. Canis, Hunger for Knowledge. Canis gains an extra point of magic for each unique dark magic tome in his inventory. Now Canis, he is a big nerd. Like, goddamn, does that man love him some books? So I decided the best course of action was to reward him for diversifying his knowledge and collecting those powerful dark art tomes. It's kind of like Ophelia's skill from Fates, but I wasn't going to let you get away with just holding on to five flux tomes. You're going to need to work for it if you want to slap five more damage onto that Lunatome attack. Dark Hellraiser. 
Dark gains three strength, skill, and speed if there are three or more enemies within three spaces of him. Now, I know some of you might consider it sacrilege that I didn't incorporate the ocean into Mr. Pirate Man's skill, but listen. Do you know how non-existent water really is in FE7? It'd have been way too situational. So instead, I went with the idea that Dart is part of Fargus' suicide squad. He's always in the dead middle of the battle. And so, while he's busting 37 skulls at once with his bare hands, he gets himself a nice little boost from being in the middle of the chaos. Fiora, Graceful Flight. Fiora can use her remaining move after attacking an enemy. She cannot perform any other actions than wait while doing this. Before you ask, yes, this is literally just you draw Kanto, but given to a single unit. But for a flight commander, I figured giving her a skill related to her ability to fly made a lot of sense. And you draw Kanto isn't really that busted, all things considered, so I don't think I'm breaking the game by giving more movement options. We're playing this like a fighting game. More movement options is always the correct option. Legault, the cleaner. Legault has the silencer skill, even if he is not promoted to an assassin. So like, did you know that Legault was an assassin? Like, the actual mean of the term, the sneaky stabby kind. So why in the hell does he need a fancy item to gain the ability to assassinate when that's literally what he was known for? And thus, the skill I gave him is the ability to use silencer, or as you kids call it nowadays, lethality, without the need of the fell contract. The cleaner needs the ability to clean, so this skill will get him his mop to bite. God, I need to write better scripts. Ninian, Passion Performer. Allies Nils plus Ninian dances for gain plus one strength, skill, and speed. This bonus increases by one when Nils reaches <clears throat> Ninian, reaches levels 5, 10, 15, and 20, capping at plus five. Look, if the game considers Nils and Ninian to be the same characters gameplay-wise, so can I. It's the exact same skill as Nils had in the last video, so go watch that one. I call this segment my I get to be lazy and not work very hard segment. Isadora, the Lone Lady Knight. Women fighting within three spaces of Isadora do an extra two damage and take one less damage. Isadora was a character that took me a hot minute to figure out what in the hell I wanted to do with. Her backstory with Harkin maybe could have been something, like playing into her heartbreak, maybe? But in the end, I decided on using her status as the Lone Lady Knight of Foray as the basis for her personal skill. I, the idea is that her role serves as an inspiration to other women, letting them know they can kick just as much ass as men, albeit with much less con. Patreon, giving me money, gives Effie MS Paint money in exchange for benefits. Benefits scale at three, five, and seven dollars a month. I am once again asking you to give me all of your money. I have a Patreon, where for as little as three dollars a month, you can gain various benefits on the channel. My patrons include the likes of Atomic X160, Dell, follow Penta the North Star on Twitch, subscribe to Great Reek, Green Brigand, Hell on Heelys, Hollow, Kieran Morin, Lightning Bolt, Me Do a Gamer. Memmy, Nember, Nevrix the Fallen Shield Guy, Ranger Man Sam, Wario Carol, Ryan Walter, Space1255, Steph D, Tato, Anti Ginger, Brentendo11, Drew Hack, Max, and Michael Hamilton. Thank you all for your continued support, and let's get started with the back half of the skills of the characters in this game. There were a lot. Heath, Chivalrous Pride. Heath gains one hit and avoid for every woman deployed on the map with him. He loses this bonus if he attacks a female enemy. Something to remember about Heath is the reason he defected to your side in the first place is that he didn't want to fight women and children. So I decided to give him a skill built around that chivalry. You don't see men skewer other people on a lance for women nowadays. But I added in that weakness to it, since it wouldn't make sense for Heath to be okay with attacking women when he specifically says he didn't want to do that. Plus, if I recall correctly, the only default female classes are Valkyries and Falcon Knights, so it should be easy enough for the player to play around. Hawkeye, the Guardian. 
Once per map, if an ally adjacent to Hawkeye would take fatal damage, Hawkeye will take the hit for them, even if it would kill Hawkeye. Like Dart, it feels like Hawkeye's skill should be related to a specific kind of terrain, but sand is even less common than water. But considering Hawkeye's title is The Guardian, I figured his skill would make sense for him to actually be guarding something. And the idea that Hawkeye is taking a blow for an ally even if it kills him is in character for him, as grim as that may be. Plus, it gives him a way to utilize that monstrous 50 base HP of his to a pretty strong effect. Geats, Absent-Minded When Geats ends the player phase without attacking an enemy, he gains 3 strength and skill. This goes away after he gets into combat. Geats, hands down, was the single hardest character for me to make a skill out of. His backstory, while really good and interesting, was virtually impossible to make a skill out of. Like what, do I make him do effective damage against dads? I ultimately went with the idea that Geats is often lost in thought and that he gets some strength from being away from things that stop him from thinking. Geats is one of my favorite FE7 characters, but sadly I just couldn't make it work that well. If you've got an idea, let me know in the comments. Be smarter than me, please. Farina, Gold Digger. All of Farina's stats are raised by 1 if she has a red gem in her inventory. This buff is raised to 2 per stat for blue gems, and 3 for white gems. Does not stack with each gem. On the flip side from Geats, Farina was one of my favorite skills to make and is probably the one I'm most proud of. Giving this greedy young goblin money in exchange for her doing better is like Hugh, except a lot more useful. She already costs 20,000 gold, so if you wanted to dish out essentially 10,000 more for a god, you're free to do so. I guess we should just be happy that the black and gold gems from Sacred Stones are Nephi 7. <laughs> god save Nurgle if they were. This next one's a twofer. Pent, Loving Husband. Pent support bonuses from Louise are doubled. And Louise, Loving Wife. Louise's support bonuses from Pent are doubled. While Pent has a character outside of Louise, and Louise has a character outside of Pent, I just couldn't bring myself not to make their skill based on their love. I'm a sucker for characters who are just, I fucking love my partner, and to me, no couple in FE signifies that as well as Pent and Louise. Plus, I love the idea that their love is just so much stronger than anyone else's in the game, so their raw damage is increased more than theirs. A simple skill? Eh, perhaps, but I think it's still effective in both application and character nevertheless. Carol, Demon Sword. Carol gains 3 strength if his opponent is equipped with a sword. Now, I don't think you need me to tell you that Carol really likes to kill things with that fancy sword of his, so I figured that giving a sort of bloodlust whenever he's fighting an opponent with a sword made the most sense. After all, the Mad Lad is literally out here like, Blade is life, so why not give him a bonus when he proves his superior swordsmanship? He's still a sword-locked infantry unit, so this isn't breaking him, but it should help out his damage at least a little bit. Harkin, never again. Harkin gains 3 strength and speed if Elawood is at 25% health or below. Harkin is a man who is carrying a metric ton of baggage that is really just too much to get into right now. So for his skill, I want to just sort of paint a scene where Harkin, upon seeing Elwood start to fall like his father before him, goes into a panicked frenzy and starts fighting like a madman, desperate to not let the same fate befall his liege twice. Keeping Elwood that low is risky given he's not the bulkiest young man, so that should be a fine balance to giving Harkin this free power. Nino, Illiterate Mage Nino doesn't use weapon durability for tomes. I've weaponized Florina's anxiety, I've weaponized Harkin's survivor's guilt, and now I will weaponize Nino's illiteracy. Since she can't actually read the books, why would she actually need to use them in the first place to cast any of her spells? So my idea is, as long as she knows the spirit she's calling, she can call it with no need to flip through any of those pages. Perhaps it's a little busted, but I figure if you're already babying up Nino, I might as well make it even more worth your time to do so. Jafar, Angel of Death. All critical hits proc the silencer skill. With a name like Angel of Death, Jafar really should be like the most assassin to ever assassin. 
so I decided giving him a stronger silencer than the other two potential assassins made the most sense for him. Maybe crit equals death is a bit too strong for late game enemies that all have a base luck of zero, but Jafar's weaknesses are still there. He's still infantry, he's still sword locked, he's just able to kill things a lot more gooder. Vida, no mercy. If an attack from Vida would leave an enemy at 5 HP or less, Vida kills the enemy. Were it not for her late join time and mediocre unit quality, Vida would go down as one of the biggest girl bosses in Fire Emblem. So for her skill, I wanted to adapt her brutality and almost sadistic nature into her ability to fight. The idea here is that she's leaving no stragglers. Once someone is in her grasp, she is not letting them get away from her. I thought this was the best part of Vida to incorporate. It was either this or using her multicolored chameleon wyvern. Carla, Calm Blade. Carla gains 20 hit and avoid when her opponent is equipped with a sword. So you know how Carol was like, Blade is life, and he takes it to a, frankly, very uncomfortable level? With Carla's skill, I wanted to incorporate an idea of being the polar opposite of Carol. Carol's helps him kill, while Carla's helps her live. They both benefit the user in fighting, but in completely different ways. The goal is to portray Carla's kinder, more pacifistic nature compared to her crazed brother. Renault, Sinner's Regret. Renault gains an effective damage bonus against Morphs. Renault is, in my opinion, the absolute king of why is this character with top tier writing impossible to learn about. Renault inadvertently helped give birth to the wicked Morphs of Nurgle's forces, and the guilt from that has threatened to consume him. And so, his skill is him harnessing the power of his sorrow and regret, stealing his resolve to right the wrongs of his youthful foolishness. Plus, his poor base magic means that he'll only be doing decent damage, really not anything strong. Athos, Archsage's Mastery. Athos gains 5 magic when he fights an enemy that's equipped with a tome. Let me make something clear. Athos isn't just a sage. He's the fucking Arch Sage. He is THE magic man in Elbian lore, so I thought he should be second to none against mages. You're really telling me that some dinky morph Nurgle maid can stand up to Gandalf Fire Emblem? HELL NO! Put some respect on Greybeard's name, and Fourblaze Nurgle into fucking ashes. Whew, that was a lot. But it's done. FE7's cast has now been fully skilled. I would like to thank both Green Brigand and Great Riot for their help, as they both helped me look over the script on this one. Next up, we'll do Sacred Stones, but that won't be for a while yet. I have a Z video to get started on. Till next time.